My name's April Roberts and I'm a project team leader here at Public Health England and my group are developing two antibody-based therapies in collaboration with a, a small industrial company, Microfarm, to treat Clostridium difficile disease. One is going to be a systemic therapy, so it's given into the bloodstream, and that's going to be used to treat patients with severe disease. The other therapy we're designing is an orally delivered therapy. Those antibodies will be used to treat people with milder forms of the disease or people that are suffering from relapses. The line of our IP is on developing treatments, be it therapeutics or vaccines. We've got five patent families that have been filed over a period of time. If we're developing it further, we've always got to be on the lookout that we, there could be further patents so that actually extends the life of your patents as well. When I did my PhD, I was totally unaware of IP, but as soon as I moved into this job where I was working on developing something that can be commercialised, I had to start thinking about IP then. I think IP comes in absolutely at the start because you can have an idea and that may be your product or it may, might form the sort of platform for your product. So I think you have to think about it right from the word go. Innovation in the current ecosystem cannot happen without intellectual property protection. Uh, it's very important to understand that because most industry sector will not be interested in uh, intellectual property which is not protected because they can't then go out and invest all the money that's required uh, to do all the clinical trials, to take it to a point where you have the regulatory approval and the market authorization so it becomes a drug, a diagnostic device or a vaccine or whatever is required to meet the patient needs. So anyone who's thinking of a career in STEM, particularly in Public Health England or similar settings, uh, should be aware of intellectual property. So I think the bottom line is that you don't have to know all the law, but you need to be able to look at your results of your experiment or your idea and say, I think I might have something here that's novel, that needs to be protected. And then you go and talk to somebody who's got more knowledge than you, who can then have a look at the idea and say, yep, yeah, I think we've got something there, let's patent it.